this episode of Horse Shelter Heroes. We have a, uh, a new staff member joining us. Ultimately, Angela and I will not have offices. So we do have the farrier coming out today. Um, also today we have a threat of severe thunderstorms that could produce a tornado. Today is our volunteer day and my granddaughter Raylin, she's three, she's come to volunteer today. We're traveling a lot this year, Washington DC trips, but we're also doing donor visits. So we're headed off to Florida. So Dr. Gina and I are about to do Cleopatra's surgery this morning. You don't want to miss a single second of course. Shelter Heroes. Really excited about this project. If you've been following, first we, this was our indoor riding arena and we had done events in here. And then we ended up moving all our riding obstacles out of this building because with the Bob Barker estate donation we received, we wanted part of it to educate people on um, horse welfare issues and we're actually holding classes here for animal control officers this summer. We're really hoping that we will have this building done for our mentoring of the Full Circle Life um, with all the organizations coming in. And uh, this is gonna be an amazing education center and I just wanted to kind of walk you through the plans. Um, and again, we are very grateful to the Bob Barker Estate. So there'll be two projects going on. The small animal spay neuter clinic will be uh, a whole nother project that we are currently working on, but uh, this is the one that we are, we're really hoping we can get done ASAP because we do have the, all these organizations coming for mentoring. We don't really want to use like a hotel room, like a conference room like we did last year. So when you walk in here, this first part is basically a foyer and we're going to put kind of like horse plus history on the walls. Um, there will be a stage two to this um, building and this will be, there'll be a door here that goes into a conference room. There will be bathrooms over there, and then there will be three offices in this uh, section. So there'll be an, uh, two offices over there, an office here, and then actually like a warming kitchen um, over here. So Angela and I, I haven't had an, my own office um, at Horse Plus for probably going on two to three years, it feels like. I've kind of just floated around wherever there was a spot. We have a, uh, uh, a new staff member joining us. And um, ultimately, Angela and I will not have offices. So we're gonna be actually over here in this new building. There'll be framing that will be happening here. We will be putting uh, two double doors right there. And then there'll be two bathrooms here, office, office. My office will be somewhere in here. And then um, the warming kitchen which will be right here. We'll have an outdoor kind of pavilion picnic area. So like when it's all the staff have pizza, we'll actually have a spot to put the food and then people can eat either outside or inside and the same when we're mentoring and doing classes. So from about this section forward will be the education hall. And we're very excited about the education hall because we can spend all the time in the world trying to rescue as many horses as possible, but we can only do what we can do. We can train others to go out and rescue animals or run their organizations better. So this education hall is going to be super, super amazing. So that's kind of a rundown of this project. Jason and I will be leaving to meet with a donor. It's been a longtime donor who wants to look at some potential projects, how she could uh, really significantly help with one of our, our, or several of our projects. So a lot going on here at Horse Plus. You'll definitely want to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get all the videos so you don't miss out on any of the things that are happening here at our facility because there's a lot that's gonna happen this year.
Last week I started putting the culvert in and what we're gonna do here is put a couple man gates in here, split this pasture so that we have a man gate to go into a pasture there and a pasture here. And then that big white and black shed up there uh, on the hill, we're gonna move it and bring it down so that uh, the horses in, that, in these two pastures have a shelter to go to for winter and storms and stuff like that if they want. So basically that's my fun for today and maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Jax, is that you? You need to move. Keith has some work to do. I thought that would take him off. Come on, Jack. There you go. Just finished moving the shed from up in the driveway area down into the pasture where it needs to be. Uh, now I gotta put up some panels and uh, run it up through the middle of the shed so that we can get uh, horses on either side of um, the panels so they have a place to get out of the weather. We're traveling a lot this year, Washington DC trips, but we're also doing donor visits. So we're headed off to Florida to go hang out with one of our really long time- uh, Major donors. Major donors. Yeah. So really excited to spend some more time with her and she's wanting to see how she can help. Um, so we've we've got some projects to tell her about, but- Yeah, Tawny's been working hard, got together some proposals and we're so looking forward to it. We'll see how that goes. Um, a lot's happening this week while we're leaving, but um, I know really good things are happening here while I'm gone and that's, that's really exciting. Horse Plus is growing up. Um, it's been growing up for a while. It's been growing up for a while. It's 21 <clears throat> this year. Yeah. I mean, like as parents, Horse Plus is 21 now, so it's it's- it's exciting. Though. If you'd like us to come visit you, um, definitely reach out to us. We are uh, doing a state planning uh, program and everything through the Horse Plus Foundation. So definitely uh, reach out if you're interested. I'm going to try to do a, um, hey, we're in this area whenever we are visiting donors and whatnot. Um, so watch for our Facebook event pages that hey, we might be in your area and you can stop in and meet us, so. Yep, well, we gotta hit the road. All right, we gotta hit the road. So, uh, really exciting things are happening at Horse Plus, though, and we're 100% in support of it. I think, um, probably should mention it, um, and Horse Plus has just grown to such a point. There's so many projects that are happening this year uh, that Angela and I are just so swamped. So we're actually having a new shelter manager starting. So she was, she's coming while I'm gone, but it's not something I don't know about or anything. So just wanting to clear that out. Uh, Angela and I are both full in support of it. So, yep. all right, we are out of here. Bye. Bye. I'm heading out to, to pick up a horse that someone needs to rescue, and I'm pretty sure I know how to get there. I, I looked at the directions. Unfortunately, my GPS quit working, so I'm gonna have to try to go off my memory, but I should be able to find it. I think I yeah, turned left here. It's dirt road. I don't, man, I think, I think I know where I'm going. It was pretty simple directions, but Here's another T and I really don't know which way to go. I guess I'll call him and ask. No signal, you gotta be kidding me. Maybe there'll be signal outside. There's just no signal here. Ah, but I have a satellite phone with me thanks to sat123.com. That's right. If you go to sat123.com Horse Plus and get one of these life-saving devices, Horse Plus will earn a commission which will help us save more horses. With the power of satellite communication technology, you can reach anybody in the world from anywhere in the world. I'm going to call them up and we're going to go get that horse.
This amazing satellite phone, with its small yet powerful form factor, delivers trusted, rugged, reliable communications all in an easy-to-use handset. And again, thanks to sat123.com, I was able to get out of a sticky situation and go get that horse. Remember, if you go to sat123.com Horse Plus and get one of these life-saving devices, Horse Plus will earn a commission, which will help us save more horses. This is Cleopatra. She is our mare who came in through the buyout program last week. Um, she has a very significant wound and infection of her right hind leg. And I'm really, really happy with the progress we've made over the last six days. When she came in, her leg basically from the hock down was putrid and moist and very, very warm and swollen. And after just less than a week, a lot of that heat has gone out and we really just have um, lingering infection on the back of the leg. She has a large wound that needs to be surgically debrided. She needs a bath. Um, but her platelet count was low and she's also anemic and she needs to see the farrier. So we are strategically refeeding her and giving her body time to rebuild those platelets and those red cells back up before we do that surgery on the wound on her back leg. She's gonna see the farrier tomorrow. Um, she had never been bathed before, so she had a really strongly negative reaction to the hose and we're slowly using a little bit of a sedative to get her used to cold hosing on that leg. So we're just gonna get that leg really clean today and get her ready for the farrier tomorrow. She's afraid of the hose and she seems a lot less reactive to having it be on her body than her legs. So we're just kind of working our way back there. Good girl. Look at this horse. This is, doesn't even look like the same horse after just a couple days of descents. Good girl. I am cleaning her big old leg. It's so hard. What is that you're using? Um, Corhexting. She really, really is. You can still feel some heat, especially from this area, but overall the leg is so much improved. We knew this mare had a lot of problems when she came in and we kind of focused on triaging the worst ones. She's got a wound up underneath her jaw. Um, she's got a lot of extensive scarring on her neck and then she's got a lot of other areas of her body. We, we're treating her with systemic antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. So we're kind of covering our bases there, but um, this part of her heel actually has a pretty significant wound as well. We just finished Cleopatra's wound care for today. She is so smart and has learned so quickly that the hose is not scary. We were able to get a lot more of the crusty ooziness off of that leg and we're really happy with how it looks. Uh, we applied a, an antifungal, antimicrobial, um, soothing kind of barrier cream to that. And then after she is seen by the farrier tomorrow, we're gonna schedule her for surgical debridement of that proud flesh that's on the leg. But overall, I'm very proud of her. Um, when she came in, she was pretty distrusting of people, a little bit hard to catch, didn't wanna eat out of your hand, and that changed really quickly. So she's been a very good patient today, and she is headed back to her stall. So we're gonna go on our way up to quarantine. We're gonna recheck these two that are in soft quarantine. He's the one that had the suture last week in his face and then Sonnet had the um, corneal ulcer. So we're gonna recheck them and then we're gonna go do lameness exams on Fernando, Amen, and James. Okay, yep. Yeah. Hi guys. He's so sweet. He's so sweet. Hi, here's the treat. Your sutures look great. Um, 99.7. Great. 
I think we just need to clean this up. So we just did a recheck on James. The vets did a lameness exam on him. Um, and so far so good. We'll keep an eye on him and see if anything else pops up, but today everything looked great. Yeah, so this eye we need to do not do a full enucleation, but we need to do a lid resection and close. And we need dental. All right, so we are done up here at quarantine doing our lameness evaluations, and now we know some are past to go in the tin acre when eventually that's okay. And one more that we need further diagnostics on, but now we're about to go back down to the vet barn and work on the two horses that we need to do, like the cleanup of the face and the hop the horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vet team had a busy day today. We had some meetings. We had to put together some wish list items, and then we did wound treatments and some lameness exams and a dental and some baths. <laughs> um, we did some blood work on a puppy. We had a bunch of cats come in. So we are wrapping up and cleaning up. We are very, very behind on our paperwork as per usual. So we got to make time to get caught up on that. Um, but yeah, we're getting stuff cleaned up and shifting to office mode for the day. So we do have the farrier coming out today. Um, also today we have a threat of severe thunderstorms that could produce a tornado. So we're all gonna be out of here by 11. Uh, the farrier said that he could still come out and do a few horses. So we have, I think six that we're gonna try to get done in the time that he's here. So we're gonna try to get all these guys caught. Um, there's a few that need dorm. So we're gonna go ahead and give them dorm and then they should be nice and ready when the farrier gets here. This is Cleopatra. This halter doesn't fit. Um, she came in our most recent buyout. She's technically still in quarantine, um, but she is one of our patients in the vet hospital and she's gonna get her feet done today. She's very long. Um, she's definitely due for a trim, but so far I've not seen anything that's really causing me to believe there's any issues. Just needs a bit of maintenance. She's actually got pretty good, pretty good concavity for a draft, which is something that they struggle with sometimes. So yeah, nothing, nothing too bad. Her right heel is way higher off the ground than her left. Okay. Um, and so we want to operate on that leg, but I wanted to get her feet looked at kind first. She's got, I'm going to try to do a skin flap over the wound and I don't want to have to mess with her foot okay. for a bit afterwards. Yeah, for sure. So, um, we do not have to... That's, a bit That's a bit much. Do you want her sedated? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't um, hurt. Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. I don't want her to get herself hurt. Um, a large piece of wood. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a long, long foot. You can see kind of when I'm cleaning this out here, you can see how deep her commissures are. I mean, like, It's, she's got a lot of retained sole, which is supporting her hoof wall, so it's not been chipping off. So she's just grown and grown and grown and stood her stuff up on a set of stilts. So we'll have to take probably a solid inch off of this hoof all the way around to get her down to where she needs to be. Just got done trimming Cleopatra. I'm a little bit out of breath. <laughs> she was uh, she was awful wiggly. Uh, it was kind of hard to hard to get her feet up. But once we got her locked in, she wasn't too bad. Her feet are all looking really good, actually. Uh, they cleaned up nice. There's no no major issues with her foot. She's obviously got uh, this issue on her her lower right leg that Doctor uh, Doctor Liddy's addressing. But 
apart from that, she's, uh, she's looking pretty good down there. This is Mercy, and uh, we're getting her feet trimmed today. She is still pretty nervous with a lot of the handling things. I'm not exactly sure what is happening to her in the past, but we're slowly making progress. She's just uh, having a hard time getting things figured out, so she does have some dorm on board, and she seems to be doing fairly decent for that. These feet are not as bad as they look. They're just super long and super flary. So right now we are working on Thaddeus. He's got about a foot and a half left that he needs trimmed. Um, he's doing fairly decent. Um, he does have dorm on board. He is about a year old, so he's still pretty nervous with a lot of things. And we're slowly working on working on picking up his feet. And he's letting me pick him up. And now we just have to get him more used to tools and stuff going down there and uh, get him prepared for the farrier without dorm. All right, well, we're getting wrapped up here. We've got some bad weather blowing in, so we're gonna cut it a little bit short. We got five done today. Uh, draft mini, couple little babies. Um, no injuries, everyone behaved pretty well. All the feet are looking good, so successful day. So we're all uh, leaving now. Storm is coming in, we're under a tornado watch. And so we're all heading out uh, as quickly as we can uh, to get to safer locations. So we're all leaving now so that we can get home and be safe. <laughs> if you enjoy watching veterinary medical and surgical procedures such as castrations, eye enucleations, and abscess lancing, go to our YouTube channel, Horse Plus Vets. We have no censorship on that channel, so if you want to see all the details of us providing medical care to shelter animals, just go to YouTube and search Horse Plus Vets. Today is our volunteer day, and my granddaughter, Raylin, she's three, she's come to volunteer today. She comes out and sees me every so often, and she wants to be a Horse Plus employee. So today's her day. There's a picture. Yeah. It takes a picture. <laughs> yeah. I'm Connie, I am a supporter for the last several years. I'm from Oregon, and I have a horse ranch there, and I am up visiting my son, Jason, in Alabama, which is about two hours and 15 minutes away, and we got up really early this morning and decided to come up here and spend a few hours uh, cleaning stalls and cleaning troughs and whatever that needs to be done and have a chance to meet everybody I've been following for years and years. So I'm so happy to be here. I'm cleaning I'm, I'm clean these, I'm cleaning these books. Oh, you're doing a good job. Oh, we're cleaning out a horse pen. We're shoveling all the manure and hay and shavings into the corner and now we're going to put them on the trailer and they get dumped in the appropriate pile. Hey guys, um, this is Lynn again. We're here um, for volunteer day and we have actually a lot of work today. Um, today we've already been cleaning out stalls and getting them ready and we even got one stall ready for a horse that just came out of surgery. And right now we're cleaning the buckets. We had a little bit of rain, but if, as you can see, the blue skies and the sun is out. So basically we're just cleaning buckets and then we might do the intake stalls as well. And that's our day for today. I got it! You got it? Yeah! Good job! I got it!
I uh, had seen quite a few videos and saw what, uh, what the organization was doing and I thought it was really a nice, a nice thing and, and I'm glad to have had the opportunity to lend a small hand in the, the functioning of the daily routine and yeah, getting to love on cowboy here is really pretty special. So, so it's been a good day. I'm enjoying meeting everybody that I've watched for years on video. I'm a nerd. I love <laughs> talking to people and stuff and it's just kind of cool. And tell them thank you so much for all that you do. And that's my favorite part, to be able to say thank you. So if you ever want to come and volunteer, please do, because it's a blast. It smells like pizza. <laughs> it does smell like pizza here. Pizza here. <laughs> You guys all work so hard. You take care of all the horses and you are putting your heart and soul in this. So I wanted to thank you guys by something simple like a lunch. But um, I wanted to say thank you to all of the hard work that everybody does here. And it's just a little, little token of our appreciation. And I hope you enjoy. Lunch was very delicious. Thank you, Connie. It was very delicious. I'm ready for a nap now. This is what's left over over here. And if we turn around, there's some of the boxes back there that we ate. And thanks again, Connie. I'm going to go find a corner and go to sleep. Our volunteer day is over and all of our volunteers are gone. We had an amazing lunch. Thanks to Connie who provided pizza and drinks and a dessert. As you can see, the pizza's pretty much all gone, and now I just have to finish cleaning up. We are just so thankful for all of our volunteers who came out today to help us get things done. So Dr. Gina and I are about to do Cleopatra's surgery this morning. Cleopatra came in with a really putrid infected right hind leg and she's been on systemic antibiotics for a week. Um, she also had really low platelets and anemia. So her platelet count has improved and her red blood cell count has improved, but she has a very large um, area of excessive granulation tissue, which we call proud flesh, um, and a biofilm of bacteria on top of it. So she needs surgical removal of those things in order for this wound to heal. So, um, you know, we wanted to wait until she was a better anesthetic candidate, but we can't wait too long because that wound won't heal without this surgery. So she just had her first pre-medication um, and we're waiting until she's sleepy enough to give that second injection. So she's gonna be under general anesthesia. We just finished Cleopatra's debridement surgery. She did great. She didn't lose too much blood. We were able to um, achieve everything that we wanted to achieve. And she has got a wrap on and she is in recovery. So we'll plan to do a bandage change tomorrow and check and see how it's looking. But I'm really happy with how everything went. After she's up and about to be moved and we're about to get Paolo in here. Um, the plan is to do his leg debridement as well as castrate him as long as both of his testicles are present. Um, so we're gonna have to wait till we knock him down to make sure about that. But if not, then we'll focus primarily on his leg wound. We just finished Paolo's surgery. Everything went well, we did not um, have communication with the Hawk joint capsule, which is a huge relief. We were able to remove all of the excessive granulation tissue from that leg, get it really clean, um, and hopefully we'll restart the healing process for that one. We also were able to castrate him. He was a little challenging because his testicles were tiny, um, but we wanted to spare him having to go under general anesthesia two times, so that went well. He is in recovery. He's having his feet worked on a little bit um, while he's still snoozing, and hopefully he'll recover on it. Uh, setting panels for uh, 
the new uh, pastures. Um, I'm gonna put a couple man gates in. I got one man gate in. Um, I'm gonna put another one right beside it. Uh, and then move some more panels down here to see if I can get things straightened out. And then I'm gonna run from here up to uh, our shed up there. So we'll have um, shelter for a couple more horses. So. Splitting up some of the pastures, making them one smaller and uh, one bigger. So hopefully I might not finish today, but get a good, a good jump on it. Got about as much done as I can today. Uh, in between the raindrops and stuff, it's been a pretty off day so we'll finish up this probably tomorrow today i have shonda with me and she's going to be the new shelter manager i'm so excited to have her here uh, i'm not leaving i'll still be here i just have a different position i'm going to be the director of operations and shonda want to tell us a little bit about you i am looking forward to joining this amazing team of professionals here at horse plus humane society I have experience in shelter management, animal control, and cruelty investigations over the years working in Kentucky and Tennessee and abroad. I also have experience with zoo animals and I teach large animal emergency rescue for emergency services. So I'm looking forward to bringing my experience to the team and being able to help with education and making a positive difference here at Horse Plus Humane Society on a daily basis. I'm going to be giving Chandra a tour of the facility and just kind of we're going to talk a little about some things and what her role will look like as shelter manager and just kind of get her introduced to everybody. I just completed a tour of the Horse Plus facility. I had a great time looking at all the horses, small animal facilities. There are so many exciting things that are gonna be happening here at Horse Plus, and I'm really looking forward to joining the team, bringing some great sheltering experience to the table, hopefully implementing some new animal care and control here in our county of Lewis County. And I look forward to making a positive difference every day here at Horse Plus. Filling holes today, I uh, pulled all the wooden posts that were in here, here and over on the other side. Uh, so I'm gonna fill the holes and then we're gonna move all the rest of the panels over and open all this back up. Uh, he's already, well, he's got a good start on it this morning. <laughs> So we got all of um, these two pastures opened up. That pasture's a little smaller, this one's a little bigger. Um, and we've got both of these pastures sprayed with our weed killer. So hopefully we grow some nice grass this year and in 24 hours we can put Glimmer and Jethro back in their pastures. 